giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shemi Havishai, Baal Shemi Kakudash. Shalom to the Lord's elect. Once again, it's another video. Hopefully, it's edifying to you, brothers and sisters out there of the household of faith. So, I'm going to deal with the topic of uh, uh, the book of uh, Mark, the seventh chapter, uh, dealing with this certain woman. Okay, as it says here, it was a Greek. I'm going to deal with that in this video. And this, what inspired me to do this video was a couple of videos I watched. I watched a um, video put up by uh, Elder Karataza of GMS uh, Baltimore. Uh, the, um, this video here, Response, Deacon and Hassad. And then I watched a video which I'm currently watching right now the importance of root words which also deals with that same topic of the woman uh, written in Ma um, Mark the 7th chapter um, it's 4.55 in the morning so forgive me if my, if my voice is not <coughs> as loud but it's 4.55 in the morning but I was just inspired to do this video so hopefully it's edifying to you brothers and sisters out there of the household of faith but before I get into it, I saw this, well, I didn't watch the video. I just saw this um, uh, tab here. Uh, you see it, it says, uh, vocab has broken GMS. <laughs> Talk about delusions, man. But I guess he got to pump himself up, you know, vocab. I only got one scripture for you, my man. And that's the great thing about time. Time reveals all, okay? In time, we'll see who has broken who. Vocab has broken GMS. You're a fat, delusional loser, man. That's what you, that's what you are. A fat, delusional loser. Anyway, let's, let me get that scripture for you. All right. The joy of the hypocrite. And you are a hypocrite. You know what proves you're a hypocrite? The joy of the hypocrite. Let me first get the scripture. When you came to them brothers... In, uh, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, after a while, you got so frustrated, frustrated, you pulled out your mic and you started over-talking them. Okay, well, if you're so into this Jesus crap that you teach, why don't you just set up your own corner, you know, find your own corner, and, and uh, every week, week in week out teach your so-called gospel okay teach your so-called doctrine okay you're not going to do that because you know why because you basically you just come around us just to cause confusion all right the different gms camps now i guess you back on that shtick like you came to our camp trying to cause confusion but the spirit was with us and you got Pretty much you got destroyed. Even your homeboy that you came with, Adam Coleman, he was right behind me. He said, good Bill, good Bill. Okay? So even he was impressed by the scriptures that was coming out, by the information that was coming out when you came and rudely interrupted our camp. Okay? So, like I said, if you really about it, weekend week out like we do set up your own corner and go out there on the street and preach your gospel right and see how many people will really listen to you and try to get a crew that's reliable because the last crew that you had they most of them they all left you <laughs> so <laughs> try to get some individuals to uh, pay up with you when you go out there and teach on the street with your with your bullhorn right try to get a, a a group of individuals that will stick with you not no fly by nighters okay and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something even if you do that that's not gonna pan out because the bottom line is the heavenly father through his only begotten son is not with you the holy spirit is not with you all right and here's the scripture for you vocab job 20 and 5 that the triumphant of the wicked is short 
So okay, you can say you, you broke GMS, which is which is totally delusional. Okay. <laughs> Every time you come around us, you get broken. That's why you're fat. Okay? Too many of them Sicilian slices. Anyway, Job twenty because you, you tried to offer us pizza after you rudely interrupted our camp. And towards the end, you try to offer us pizza. Oh, I'll take you guys for pizza. It's, it's, it's on me. And we don't eat no goddamn pizza, man. <laughs> Too much carbs, homeboy. That's why you look, that's why you look the way you do. Okay. <laughs> need, to st need to start hitting them trails. Biking or walking or something, man. Lose that weight. Anyway, Job 20 and 5. That the triumphant of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. The joy of the hypocrite is just but for a moment. So we'll see. In the future, we'll see who has broken who. GM, uh, vocab has broken GMS. In your dreams, vocab. In your dreams. <laughs> Inside joke. In your dreams. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, the the book of um, Mark, the seventh chapter. Let's talk about this woman, this Syrophoenician woman, and uh, why why the Lord said what He said unto her. Uh, in particular, the twenty seventh verse: Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. So, you know, a lot of unlearned Israelites, they see the term dog, they, immediately they're thinking that this person is of another nation. That's why this person was called a dog. And that's not necessarily so. Israelites were also called dogs. Okay. Let me show you a scripture here. And it's talking about Israelites. Okay. As a matter of fact, I thought about Caleb. Right, the, the name Caleb means dog. Okay, the name Caleb means dog. Now, dog, the term dog don't always have to be negative. A, a dog is, a, if you know the characteristics of a dog, a dog is very loyal, very loyal, and very humble. A dog, two of the characteristics of a dog is to be very humble and to be very loyal. Okay, that's why it is said a dog is a man's best friend. Okay, it's sometimes the word dog is used in an in a insulting sense, to insult someone, and sometimes the word dog is used to compliment one, as in being humble and loyal. Okay, so in this scripture here, the, the term dog is used to insult, but it's talking about Israelites over here. This is Isaiah 56 and 10. His watchmen are blind, right? They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. And that's talking about the phony pastors, the phony preachers, the phony prophets of the nation of Israel. Okay, that's that's what the scripture is talking about. His watchmen are blind. Because who are the watchmen? According to the Bible, the watchmen are Israelites. You know, in Habakkuk, it's, it's, uh, the scripture goes, um, I will stand upon my watch. Right? Yahweh Shai told his disciples, which became apostles, to watch, watch for his return. So this scripture here, in the right context, is talking about wicked Israelites. His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are, they are all dumb dogs. So here we see the term dogs being applied to Israelites, wicked Israelites. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Okay. And then it goes on to say, yea, they are greedy dogs. And we see that now with these certain Israelite groups. Greedy dogs, man. Okay. Which can never have enough. How about those phony pastors? Okay. They're Israelites. These phony pastors like T.D. Jakes and, and Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar. That tells you everything you need to know. He's an Israelite. He's a greedy dog. And he can't, he can't understand. There's many scriptures that he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand prophecy. I'm talking about Creflo Dollar. Okay? 
So yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. See, they are shepherds. Who, who are the only shepherds according to the scriptures? Israelites. But you got your true shepherds and you got your false shepherds. Okay? And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Cannot understand what? Prophecies. Cannot understand the scriptures. Because the Holy Spirit's not working with them. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. So what's the point? The point is they are greedy dogs. Because just, you know, just because you see the word dog doesn't mean it's of a, that person's of another nation. Okay? This is where discernment comes in. All right, so let's get into it. Mark the seventh chapter. So I made that point with the dogs, right? As a, as a matter of fact, let's look at the word Caleb. All right. Okay, Numbers 13 and 30. Let's go to Numbers. I'm going to show you the word Caleb, which he was an Israelite, means dog. Numbers 13 and 30. Numbers 13 and 30. Okay, it says, uh, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb, right? That's why it didn't come up, because I didn't spell it right. Now, this individual, Caleb, was an Israelite. Okay. Maybe I'll look for his uh, genealogy. The Hebrew word there is kalab. Kalab. And what does it mean? See that? Dog. Huh? Dog. The godly son of Jephune. Jephune and the faithful spy who reported, the faithful spy, who reported the promised land favorably and urged its capture, right? Son of Herzon, or Hezron, son of Hezron, and grandson of Perez, and great-grandson of Judah, see, of Judah, and the father of her and grandfather of Caleb the spy. So, the grandfather of Caleb the spy. Okay. So, Caleb. So, you had this, the, the spy no, uh, named Caleb. And you had his grandfather was also named Caleb. So, Caleb was a popular name in in uh, Israel and what does the name Caleb mean dog so just because you see the word dog you can't you can't uh, form your opinion on this woman being a heathen because you see the term dog because you how wish I called her dog cast it onto the, the dogs okay So let's get into it. Mark 7 and 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it. So I wish I was trying to find some rest because his, his ministry was intense. All right. Anyway, 
but he could not be hid right so the first clue there is he went out of Jerusalem outside of Jerusalem okay let's see where the uh, borders of Tyre and Zidon are located Let's do a web search. See you around what area the Lord was. Okay, there's a clue right there. Tyre and Zidon, it says, were the two most important cities of Phoenicia. Phoenicia. Now, as you're going to see in this video, Phoenicia was an was a area outside of the city of Jerusalem okay and there's a significance to that as you're about to see Yahweh visits Tyre on his visit he healed a Canaanite woman and her daughter now again an unlearned Israelite will see Canaanite woman and say and say see that proves she was a heathen she was a Canaanite well how about Simon the Canaanite he was one of the twelve. Let's read. Simon the Canaanite. Hope it comes up. It is right here. Now, how could one of the twelve be a heathen? Doesn't make sense. All the twelve, they were Israelites. Their nationality, were, they were Israelites. None of the twelve was, was a heathen. And that should be a clue to you, wacky tacky Christians. The fact that none of the twelve that Yahweh hand picked, the twelve which became uh, apostles, they were first disciples and they became apostles, not one of them uh, was a heathen or non Israelite. Not one of them was a heathen or non Israelite. They were all Israelites. So check that out. And they were all of the seven kingdoms. So that's a clue. They were all of the southern kingdom. Because as the prophecy says, the tents of Judah had to be risen first. All right? The tents of Judah had to be risen first. And when it says the tents, as a matter of fact, we'll get that scripture. Uh, when it says the tents of Judah, it's talking about the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay? They were collectively called Jews, if you know the history. So this is Matthew 10 and 4. It says, now again, let's go to let's go to the first verse. And when he had and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. So <laughs> We're talking about the twelve subject matter, the twelve apostles. All right. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these: the first Simon, who was called Peter, he was the head, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bath Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Altheus, and Lebeus, Leb Lebeus whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite. Simon the Canaanite. Okay? And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, Simon the Canaanite was also known as Simon the Zealot. All right? Simon the Zealot. Now, if we look up that word Canaanite, now, in Elder Pastor's video, I think he looked it up, and the, and the word there was jealous. Okay, jealous. There you go. Simon the Canaanite. The, the Greek word there is. Let's play that. Strong's G twenty five eighty one, Kananias. Kananias. Thayer's lexicon. Kananites. Kananites. All right, Kananias. Kananites. Canaanite zealous. 
all right, zealous, which which makes sense because he was called Simon the Z Simon Zelotes. He was a zealot. And when you when you've filled with fiery passion, you tend to get jealous. So it makes sense. The surname of Apostle Simon, otherwise known as Simon Zelotes, or Simon the Canaanite. Uh, Cananites, Cananites of Chalde origin, zealous, zealous, okay, Canaanites, an epithet, so it's an epithet, Canaanite by mistake, a derivative from G5477. Now let's type in, uh, let me open up another tab and ask the question, was Simon the, Z the Zealot, was he from the land of, which, let's not forget, Israel, before it became the land of Israel, was known as what? The land of Canaan. Okay, we, we got the, the Israelites got the land from the Canaanites. We took, we took over the land from the Canaanites. So before the land of Israel was called Israel, Israel, it was known as the land of Canaan. So let's not forget that. But I just want to ask the uh, question. We know why he was called Simon the Canaanite. Or Simon the Zealot. Or Simon the Zealous. Or, or Zealous. Okay. And we go back to the... the etym and that's why Apostar did his video. The, the importance of the etymology of words. Was Simon the, Oh, let's type in this. Where was Simon the Zealot from? Let's type in that. That's even better. see what we got Simon the Zealot place of birth Kana hmm however Jerome and others such as Bede suggested that the word Kana Kanaios Kanaios or Canaanite should be translated as Cain Canaan or Canaanite meaning that Simon was from the town of Cana in Galilee and we know Galilee is um, the town of Galilee matter of fact yeah, this is uh, Wikipedia Simon the Zealot. Uh, the Zealot, to distinguish him from Simon Peter, he is given a surname in all three of the Sino, Sinopic, Sinopic Gospels where he is mentioned. Simon is called Zelotes in Luke. And Zelotes means filled with zeal or jealous. Okay. Hey, it says, um, hey, it says both Cana, Cana, Cananios and Canaanites derived from the Hebrew word Quanai uh, Quana in uh, the, the way we pronounce in Lashawan Kodash is Quana Quana meaning zealous 
okay? So most scholars today, and we're supposed to be scholars in this thing of ours, scholar means uh, uh, schooled, learned, okay? The scriptures say, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing word of truth. Uh, so it says, so most scholars today generally translate the two words to mean zealot. So the word so Simon the Canaanite means Simon the zealot. Zelotes, zeal. He was filled with zeal. Now here it says, meaning that Simon was from the town of Cana in Galilee. Cana in Galilee. That's click on Galilee. Where was Galilee located? It's, it's, it's important for you to know these areas too. Not only is it is, you know, Pastor does did his video, uh, the importance of the etymology of words. What is equally important to the etymology of words is knowing uh, uh, geographic locations, man. Knowing geographic locations is equally important. We can't half-step in this thing of ours, man. So Galilee, where was Galilee located? Galilee is a region located in northern Israel, northern Israel, and southern Lebanon, okay, northern Israel. Okay, let's see if we can find Galilee here. Uh, over here we see the Galilee Panhandle, Upper Galilee. So clearly you see it's in the land of Israel. You have Upper Galilee, you have Lower Galilee. Now wait a minute, Lower Galilee, wh wh what do we see here? Nazareth, does that ring a bell? Yahawishai dwelt in Nazareth, okay? Now it doesn't say if, if uh, this Simon Zelotes was from Upper Galilee or Lower Galilee. He was called Simon the Canaanite because he came out of a town, Cana, in Galilee. We just read that. Okay? And now we know why he was called Simon the Canaanite, because it goes back to the, the Greek words, uh, Cana, Cana, Cananios, which means zeal. All right? Zeal. Zeloti, zeal. He was zealous, which means he was jealous. Okay? So again, Lower Galilee, you see, you see uh, the town of Nazareth. Isn't that the town where Yahusha was raised? Let's, let's bring in the scripture. Nazareth. He was born in, in, in uh, Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth. It is right here. Okay. After he came back from Egypt, and he had fled to Egypt. As a matter of fact, let's read it. Matthew 2 and 19. The he I'm talking about is Yahweh Shai. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Now, remember, they had fled to Egypt, fleeing from Herod's wrath. Because Herod was trying to uh, kill Yahweh Shai as a child. Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose, the, the he would be Yahweh Shai's biological father, Joseph. And then he took his wife of him, Mary. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. And when he had heard that Achilles, 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 Achilles did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of the heavenly father in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee, into the parts of Galilee. There you go, Lower Galilee, Nazareth. Oh, it's going to tell you that. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. So that's accurate. There you go. Lower Galilee. 
Now it so happens that this Simon Zelotes was also from that region. It didn't say if he was from Lower Galilee or Upper Galilee. If we do a, a more complete research, we'll find out exactly where Simon Zelotes was from. But he was a Hebrew Israelite. Now an unlearned Israelite will say, "Oh, well, so yeah, Simon, Simon the Canaanite. That proves he was of another nation. No, he wasn't. He was an Israelite. He was one of the twelve. And he may have dwelt in the same area where Yahweh Shai dwelt. So check that out. And he came and dwelt, or dwelt, in a city called Nazareth, located in Galilee, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. There you go. So that, that's that's all we need. Okay. So now let's get back to this woman now. Let's do some detective work. Wait for me for a minute. So it's important for you to know areas. So now we know about this Simon the Canaanite. So that's the point. You see the term Canaanite. Somebody unlearned will say, oh, that proves he was of another nation. No, he wasn't. He was a Hebrew Israelite from the area known as Galilee. Okay, Cana of Galilee. Yahweh Shai dwelt in the city called Nazareth, also located in Galilee. So how about that? All right. So let's get back to Matt. Uh, Mark 7 now. So now, the, the borders of Tyre and Zidon. This is where Yahweh is. Now, Tyre and Zidon, I want to know where... As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me do that. Let's do a web search in Tyre. Tyre and Zidon. Some say Tyre, some say Tyre. Okay. Let's do this. Where is Tyre and Zidon located? Where is the biblical? Where is the biblical? Biblical Tyre. Sidon. Okay, the names, let's read that. Lebanon. The names of Tyre and Zidon were famous in the ancient ancient Near East. They are also important cities in the Old and New Testaments. Both are now located in Lebanon, with Tyre 20 miles south of Zidon, uh, and only 12 miles north of the Israel Lebanon border. Israel Lebanon border. Check that out. Matter of fact, let's go to the images. All right. There's a map here. So we want to see where Yahweh Shai was at. There it is right there. Ty and Zidon. That's where Yahweh. So this is way outside of. Hold up now. This is way outside of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem. Okay. I'm trying to find the city of Jerusalem here on this map. It'd be somewhere around Nazareth, somewhere around there, Jerusalem. So we, we can come to the conclusion that Tyre and Zidon was way outside of Jerusalem. Now that's very important because the truth, when the, when the, when Yahweh Shai started preaching his gospel, he started in Jerusalem. Okay, and the, the Israelites that lived predominantly in Jerusalem were of what? They were what, what kingdom they were of? They were of the southern kingdom predominantly. All right, so keep that in mind. They were of the southern kingdom predominantly. Now, Yahweh Shai began his, his ministry in Jerusalem. Let me show you that. Beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. And that's according to uh, that's according to the prophet, which we'll read that next. But let's get the scripture first. Let's prove to you that Yahweh started his ministry at Jerusalem. There was a reason for that. As a matter of fact, all the twelve came out of that region. We even read about the Simon Zelotes. 
okay? And he was one of the 12. And remember, Judas Iscariot was replaced by Matthias, okay? So this is Luke 24 and 46. And he and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Yahawashai to suffer. And that's what this knowledge of truth is all about. It's all about suffering, man. And there's certain Israelites, a lot of Israelites, that just don't get that. They want the kingdom now. Now that they're coming to the knowledge of the truth, they believe that now is the time to get the kingdom. No, man, you got to suffer first before we get the kingdom. Before honor comes humility, as it is written. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Yahweh to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. Right, going into the fourth day when he would the heavenly father Yahweh rose him up from, from the tomb. And and he's sitting at the right hand side of the father to this very day. Sitting, standing, you know. Uh reading on it says, and that repentance, listen good, and remission of sins should be preached in his name, in his ooh, that's a cut. That's a cut. That's a cut to Bishop Nathaniel. It says repentance. What's it say there? Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. His name is not Jesus Christ. His name is not Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. So if you're going to pre preach the re repentance and the remission of sins, which was only given to the nation of Israel, you got to preach it in his name. Like it says here, should be preaching his name among all nations. There you go. Beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. That's very important. See, when Yahweh started his ministry, his ministry began at Jerusalem with the Jews that was located around that area. The, the Israelites that were predominantly of the southern kingdom. Okay? So it started with, and there's a reason for that. Let's, get, let's uh, go to the prophecy. The tents of Judah. There's a reason why Yahweh Shai started his ministry at Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the center of the earth, by the way. As it is written, Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Let's get that first. Let's get that. Okay? Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Let's get that. And then we get the prophecy. Mother of us all. Actually, no. Nah. I think it's in Galatians. Yeah, there it is. So the city of Jerusalem, there we go. Galatians 4 and 26, but Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. And that's where the truth started, as, as in the gospel of Yahweh Shai, the preaching of the gospel of Yahweh Shai started at Jerusalem. Let's read that one more time again, Luke 24 and 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem beginning at jerusalem now let's go to the prophecy the tents of judah all right the tents of judah and that's why all the 12 all the 12 were what they came out the kingdom of judah not necessarily all came out the tribe of judah but the kingdom of judah kingdom of judah also known as the Southern Kingdom, consisted of Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Okay? The Apostle Paul, what tribe was he from? Well, wait a minute, he called himself a Jew, but he was of the tribe of Benjamin. Before I read that, let's take a look at that. Hey, let me show you a scripture where the Apostle Paul calls himself a Jew. Then he called himself a Roman, too. <laughs> but we ain't going to deal with that in this video. We just want to... Oh man, which am a Jew? Which am a Jew? Which am a Jew? All right. It is right here. This is the book of uh, Acts 21 and 39. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. And Tarsus was, pff, you want to talk about way outside of Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. Tarsus was located way up north from Jerusalem. You're heading way up north. Yeah. All right. But Paul said, I am a man which I am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, 
a city, uh, I'm sorry, a citizen of no mean city, no average city. The term mean there means average. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak to the people. So the Apostle Paul here says he's a Jew. But in Romans, what is that? Romans, uh, Romans the 11th chapter, he says, he tells you what tribe he came out of. Okay. He was actually a Benjaminite. But the tribe of Benjamin, see, this is why you got to know the history. The tribe of Benjamin was part of the southern kingdom. The tribe of Benjamin was part of the kingdom of Judah. Hence the reason why the Apostle Paul calls himself a Jew or called himself a Jew. Okay, the term Jew goes back to Judah. Now the kingdom of Judah consisted of three tribes. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they were collectively known as the kingdom of Judah or the kingdom of the Jews. And then you had uh, the kingdom of Israel, which was the northern tribes, led by the tribe of Ephraim. Now, the thing is, even at that time, during the time of our Lord, you had a scattering, a very small scattering of the northern kingdom located in Israel, even at that time. How do we know that? The letter that James wrote. Okay, first, let's read this. Romans 11 and 1, I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? God forbid, who's the Lord's people? The Israelites. For I also am an Israelite. So he's telling you who the Lord's people are right there. To use dumb, stupid, wacky-tacky Christians. The Apostle Paul is telling you, telling you, and you're not listening, who the Lord's people are right there. That they're the Israelites. Let's read it again. I say then, have God cast away his people? The, the Most High's name is Yahweh. We don't say God. We say his name. We call him by his name, Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai, and that's in the ancient Hebrew. Have the Heavenly Father cast away his people? God forbid, meaning no. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So again, if you know the history, the tents of Judah... The tents of Judah consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were collectively known as the Southern Kingdom. Okay, and that's why the Apostle Paul called himself a Jew. Okay. So now, oh, let's go to James, because you had a scattering. Now remember, the prophecy says the tents of Judah had to be risen first. Right? Yahweh started his ministry where? In Jerusalem. He began it in Jerusalem. But you did have a scattering of the other tribes, the northern kingdom. Okay? You had a small scattering uh, living, and we're going to prove it. You had a small scattering living in the land of Israel. Okay? They were scattered outside of cities like Nazareth and Jerusalem. And Cana of Galilee. Because the, the people that were living there, Nazareth, Cana of Galilee, Jerusalem, they were predominantly what? Of the southern kingdom. They were predominantly Jews. They were either of the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now, on the outskirts of Israel, you had a scattering, okay? You had a scattering of members of the northern kingdom, as in the northern tribes, Ephraim. Uh, Simeon, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, okay? And we get a clue. First, let's go to James 1. Then we're going to go to where it is written of this prophetess Anna, okay? And you have to know the history, man. All right? James 1. Uh, look at the subheading. Testing your faith. James. Now, this James, and a lot of wacky-tacky Christians don't even know this. This James was Yahweh Shai's biological brother. Yahweh Shai's biological brother. This James here. That's not James. This James here is not the, the brother of John, the Apostle John, who, who died on the island of Patmos. This was another James. James was a common name in Israel. All right. So James, a servant of the Heavenly Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Now, scattered abroad would begin with outside of Jerusalem. Outside of Jerusalem, outside of that initial area where Yahweh Shai started his ministry, 
it would be considered abroad and especially out of the land of, outside of the land of Israel because the center so you can understand the center was Jerusalem where did Yahushua begin his ministry we just clearly read it he began his ministry in Jerusalem the city of Jerusalem which is the mother of us all and there's a reason for that because the tents of Judah and I'm going to go back and read that scripture in the prophecy so back in James 1 and, and, and 1 James a servant of the heavenly father and the Lord Yahweh to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting okay let's read that in the NLT sometimes the NLT has a way of being brutally uh, simple okay S simplified which is good that's what we want to do in this thing of ours we we want to take something that's complicated and simplify it so that it's easily understood the scriptures say speak words that are easy to be understood right so james 1 and 1 this letter is from james it, before it became a book it was a letter a slave of the heavenly father and our lord yahweh shai and that's essentially that's what we are slaves i am writing to the 12 tribes <laughs> to the 12 tribes jewish believers scattered abroad now some of the, the it, was, it said 12 tribes okay so you so you you had um members uh scattering of members of the different tribes outside of the kingdom of judah the kingdom of Judah consisted of three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. The rest of the Israelites were called the kingdom of Israel, okay, which consisted of Ephraim all the way down to Issachar. Okay? Now, the majority, and I should say this, the majority of the northern kingdom came over here to the Americas, the majority of them. They, first, they went into Assyrian captivity, and the scriptures tells us that. And then from Assyria, they left Assyria, sailed around the horn of africa sailed around africa and came to the americas took them a year and a half to do so and that account is found in the apocrypha second Ezra, the 13th chapter the 40th verse but did you have a scattering of the northern kingdom in the even in the land of israel during the time of our lord the answer is yes let's get another example This is the book of Luke 2 and 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa or Asher. Asher was of the northern kingdom. Okay. It says, she was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Okay. I just want to see where she lived at. What area did she live? That's that even might be worth a Google. What area did matter of fact, you know what? If we can't oh look wait a minute, hold up. Uh Luke two and thirty eight, let's read that in NLT. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising the Heavenly Father. She talked about the child to everyone who had been ex who had been waiting expectantly for the Most High to risk to rescue Jerusalem. Okay, I just want to know where 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 this woman Anna. Where was the where was Anna the prophetess? tribe of Asher we know that the Bible also indicates that she was from the tribe of Asher so this proves you can't get around this this proves that you had a scattering of the northern kingdom living in the land of Israel even during the time of our Lord 
a tribe that was taken into captivity in Babylon and did not return intact. They, they actually were taken into captivity. Uh, they were part of the northern kingdom, taken into captivity by the Assyrians. All right. Uh, so it is unlikely that she had an ex she had an extended family network to rely on. Okay. So it really doesn't tell us where she was from in the land of Israel. I was trying to find out if she was from. Well, here it says, after becoming a widow, Anna, Anna dedicated herself wholly to the Lord. She never left the temple in Jerusalem. But I, I was trying to find out if she actually was from Jerusalem. Because most of your northern members of the northern kingdom were scattered outside of Jerusalem. Okay. All right, so now let's go back to Luke. Is it Luke? Matthew. I'm sorry, Mark 7. So, again, Mark 7 and 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon. Now we know where Tyre and Zidon is located. It was, it was a great distance outside of Jerusalem where Yahushai started his ministry. And it made sense that Yahushai went there to try to get some relaxation. Because he was famous in um, those uh, the area of Galilee, which you had the cities of Nazareth, you had the cities of Jerusalem, you had the cities of Cana. He, Yahushai was famous around that region. So it makes sense for him to travel that great distance just to find some peace and re relaxation. As it says here, so he went all the way north to the borders of Tyre and Zidon. Tyre and Zidon was north, a great distance north of Jerusalem. So let's keep that in mind. So while he was there, he met this certain woman. Now this certain woman could have been, it doesn't tell us, but she could have been of the northern kingdom. She could have been one of those Israelite stragglers, for lack of a better term, leftovers, if you will from the, the, the great exodus of the uh, northern kingdom that took place in, what, 722 B.C., all right? This woman could have been a descendant, could have been, which is why Yahushua told her, it is right. That's why he told her, let the children first be filled. What was the children? The tents of Judah first. The Jews, they had to first get the knowledge before the rest of the tribes. Let's, let's, let's get that. I forgot to read that. Uh, tents of Judah. See, that's why I had to go through all that history, man. The tents of Judah. We have to understand what was going on first, first before we can understand that scripture. So in, during that time, the Lord, when he started his ministry, he was mainly c concerned. That's why he told his disciples, do not go into the Samaritans. Enter ye not into the Samaritans. Um, enter ye not into Samaria. Remember when Yahweh said that to his disciples? He was, Yahweh was mainly concerned with the Jews first. Okay. And then he spoke about other sheep I have, which is not of this fold. What fold? What does he mean by th this fold? The fold of the Jews. Them also must I bring. See? It all goes back to that split, man. You had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Yahweh primarily, when he first started his ministry, he was primarily concerned with the southern kingdom. Here's the prophecy, Zechariah 12 and 7. It says, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's why he told the woman, let's go back to what he told the woman. But Yahweh said unto her, let the children first be filled. Who are the children is talking about here? It's talking about the southern kingdom, the Jews, the tents of Judah. They had to get the knowledge first. Then the rest of the tribes. Doesn't the, the, the fact that he said that to the woman doesn't prove that the woman was a heathen. See, you, you got certain Israelites out there that are not truly well learned, man. Okay, let's go back to the prophecy. Zechariah 12 and 7. The Lord also said, save, the Lord also save 
the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David, the house of David, and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. See, Judah, the kingdom of Judah. Judah had to be risen first. The, 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 the Apostle Paul said, but every man in his own order. He also said, let, ev let all things be decently and in, be done decently and in order. That's the key word there, order. So the order is Judah had to be risen first, then the rest of the tribes. So this woman, is, it, it's, it's quite possible that she could have been of the northern kingdom, this woman here. It doesn't say, but it's quite possible. Okay? Some of the Israelite foreigners, and I say some, some of them, it's quite possible they could have been of the northern kingdom. Some of the Israelite foreigners, not all of them. You had, you had Jews uh, that were of the southern kingdom that were Israelite foreigners. Case in point, the Alexandrian Jews. They came out of the city of Alexandria, Egypt. You know how far Alexandria, Egypt is from Jerusalem? So there you go. But they were Jews. They were of the southern kingdom, but they just happened to live in Alexandria, Egypt. So Mark, the seventh chapter, the 25th verse, for a certain woman who's young. Now remember, Yahweh is way outside of Jerusalem where he started his ministry. I want you to see that. He's way outside of Jerusalem, way north, outside of Jerusalem, where he started his ministry. Okay. He's, 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 he's chilling in, in uh, the borders of where? Tyre and, Tyre and Zidane, which is, I, I should have looked up the, the mile scale on the map to find out exactly how far he was outside of Jerusalem. But we know for a fact he, he traveled a great distance just to get some uh, peace and relaxation. But like it says, hey, he could not be hit because he would, he, really he wasn't in, it wasn't in the time for him to be uh, uh, in peace and relaxation. As even for us, that's why the scripture, the Apostle Paul said it. He said, um, there remaineth a rest to the people of the Heavenly Father. There was no rest for Yahweh Shai. So there ain't no rest for us. Since we've been called into this ministry, there ain't no rest for us, man. How can you rest in a cesspool? This place is a cesspool. So Mark 7 and 25, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. He had work to do. Yahweh Shai had work to do. The woman was a Greek. So now, again, did you have Israelites that spoke Greek, that were being called Greek? The answer is yes. Timothy's father was a Greek. Let me show you that. What does that mean? Does that mean that he was an Edomite, Timothy's father? No, he was an Israelite that spoke Greek. And we're going to go into the term Greek goes back to Hellenists. Okay, you had a term called Hellenists. Hellenists was a term used for Israelites that adopted Greek customs and spoke Greek. Okay? This is the book of Acts 16 and 1. It says, Then came he to Derby, that he is uh, the Apostle Paul. Look, look at the subhead in here for the NLT. Paul's second missionary journey. Then came he to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, who, which was a Jewess. What does that mean? Meaning she came out of the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. That's why she was called a Jewess. All right, either Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, okay? Timothy's mother, right? And believed, but his father was a Greek. So now what does that mean? Does that mean his father was an Edomite? Because the, the, the true Greeks were what? Edomites, okay? And that was a name that they adopted, the Edomites, Greek, which they got from Japheth. But that's another, that's another topic, So we're going to look up the word Greek and get some more understanding. His father was a Greek, Hellene. See that? Hellene. You had the Hellenistas and you had the Hellene. The difference is 
the Hellenistas, they knew of the truth. They knew of the law, statutes, and commandments. There were Israelites that practiced the law, statutes, and commandments. But they just happened to speak Greek. All right, They were raised outside of Jerusalem. Outside of Galilee, if you will. Okay? The, those were the Hellenistas, and then you had the Hellen. Those were Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites that thought they were Greeks, raised up as Greeks. They were totally into Greek culture. They were called Hellen. So you have to know the difference between the Hellenistas and the Hellen. So Timothy's father, he, he, in other words, Timothy's father, he was an Israelite by nationality, but he was more into the Greek customs. He didn't care for the Israelite way of life. But his wife did. That's the difference. Okay. Matter of fact, here they give you the definition right here. Helene. In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks. A lot of Israelites did that. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's go to the Apocrypha to prove that. Let's go to the book of, uh, in the Apocrypha, let's go to the book of First Maccabees. Let's read, read about the beginning of the Hellenization of the Israelites, becoming Greeks. And that's the one thing the wacky tacky Christian don't want to deal with, the fact that you had Israelites that adopted Greek customs that adopt, adopted heathenistic customs, and they were called Gentiles. They don't want to deal with that, because you know why? It destroys their argument of saying that the Lord came for everybody, as in non-Israelites. No, you had Israelites that followed the Gentile customs. You had Israelites that were being called Greeks, because they spoke Greek and followed the customs of the Greeks, worshipped the gods of the Greeks, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, we're going to... Um, First Maccabees. Yeah, it is. First Maccabees 1. And it started the 10th verse. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, some say Antiochus, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus or Antiochus the king, who had been an hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. I think he came on the scene around 160, 170 BC, Antiochus, somewhere around there. All right, remember the, 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 the Greek colonization of the Israelites started after Alexander the Greek conquered the whole known world. As a matter of fact, Alexander wept because there was no more lands to conquer. Alexander was a stone cold warrior, man. And he had Israelites in his army. All right. Cle uh, Cletus Mellus was one of those Israelites in his army. That's in the history. Alexander. All right. So let's read on. It says, In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, many other Israelites, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. What heathen? The Greeks, which were Edomites at that time. Then they became Romans, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. This is the beginning of Hellenization. This is the beginning of Hellenine, or Hellene, not Hellenine, Hellene and Hellenistas and all of that, man. The beginning of Hellenization. We're reading it right here. Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So they wanted a better life. So let's live like the Greeks so we can have a better life. That's what these wicked Israelite men were saying. Let's forget about these laws, statutes, and commandments. Our power has forgotten about us anyway. He has forsake, forsaken us, our power, which is Yahweh. Right? And the scriptures tell you that. The Most High because of the wickedness of Israel, the Heavenly Father cast them off. So their reasoning was, you know what, let's forget about our power. Let's just follow these Greeks. If we, In other words, if we can't beat them, let's join them. That type of scenario. Right? 
So this device pleased them well. Right, if we, if we can't beat them, let's join them. Then certain of the people, what people? The Israelites were so forward herein that they went to the king, King Antiochus or Antiochus, who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. So here we see Israelites becoming Hellenized, following the ways of the Greeks. If you can't beat them, join them. We got to have a good life. If we want a good life, we got to follow these Greeks. We got to become just like them. And hopefully we'll be accepted by them. The same shit going on in America today with these Israelites. You know, if we, we got to become just like the so-called white man so we can enjoy a good life just like the so-called white man. We can live in his neighborhoods. We can go to his schools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Same old game, man. The same old game, okay? Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. You see that? So they became Hellenized. All right, so that's why it says here, Hellene. In the widest sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks their own. And in, in this case, we're dealing with the nation of Israel. Did the nation of Israel do that? The answer is yes. I just proved it to you through 1 Maccabees, the first chapter. All right, the, the nation of Israel took on the customs of the Greeks, the learning of the Greeks, the language of the Greeks. Their own, the primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. And we know the Greeks worship other gods. So that's what this Timothy's father did. That's why he was called a Greek, not because he was an Edomite. So when it says this, the woman was a Greek, let's look up that term Greek here. Okay. She was living in an area where you had Israelites raised up as Greeks. All right, Hellenis, 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 okay, Hellenis. She wasn't raised, she wasn't, um, even though she had faith, all right, she had faith, but she wasn't raised up. That's why she was called a Hellenese. All right, she wasn't raised up as, as your typical uh, member of the southern kingdom, a Jew, if you will, raised up with the laws, statutes, commandments, etc., etc. But this woman had great faith. Now, there's a clue for you, great faith. The faith is only, the gift of faith in this knowledge of truth is only given to the Israelites. All right, the the uh, Ephesians two and, and uh, Ephesians two and eight, so that's another clue for you. Who was faith given to? Faith in the word, or faith of the word? Who was it given to? What nation was it given to? The nation of Israel, man. So that's another clue to prove the woman was an Israelite. Ephesians two and eight. Let's read it. It says, "For by grace are ye saved through faith." And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Heavenly Father. And who is that gift given to? The Israelites. Beginning with the elect. The scriptures speak about the faith of the saints. So this woman had great faith. Yahweh Shai marveled at her faith. That's why he healed her daughter. Now there's a scripture. Now check this out. I have not found so great faith. No not in Israel. I hope it comes up. Because some of the, uh, some of the uh, uh, members scattered outside of uh, the kingdom of Judah, all right, some of the, the uh, Israelite foreigners, if you will, which some of them could have been of the other tribes, they, they were renowned for their great faith. They had more faith than the Jews did. Now check that out. <laughs> That's why Yahweh Shai made this statement. Okay? That's why Yahweh Shai made this statement. And it's all about faith. Now, see, now all of us have become, all of us Israelites have become heathens, Gentiles, if you will. And through this knowledge, this truth, we're coming back to our nationality. 
Okay? So this thing is all is all about faith. Matthew 8. Now this centurion, right? Let's read this. Could this centurion have been of another tribe? Possibly, quite possibly could have. Matthew 8 and 5. And when Yahweh was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, a centurion, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Yahweh saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Now, why did he say that? Because he wasn't particularly following Yahweh Shai, all right, his ministry. But yet he had faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's why he said, I'm not worthy, all right? And he could have been of another tribe outside of the kingdom of Judah. He could have been of the northern kingdom. He could have been, could have been. It doesn't say, but he could have been. We have to consider that possibility. All right? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Remember, Yahweh Shai's main focus when he started his ministry was on the southern kingdom. That's why he began his ministry where, people? In Jerusalem. Why? Because the people that lived around that area were predominantly of the southern kingdom. They were predominantly Jews. Going back to the prophecy in Zechariah, the tents of Judah must be risen first. We just read that. Zechariah, the 12th chapter, the 7th verse. So you have, you have to understand that. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Now that's a demonstration of faith. And my servant shall be healed. Check that out. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and I and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Yahweh heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, now check this out, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. No, not in Israel. So is is Yahweh Shai saying that this man was a was a, a heathen, as in a non-Israelite, that had faith in him? No. You have to understand when he said Israel, he's talking first about the southern kingdom. So in, in certain aspects, you had certain members of, uh, uh, of descendants of the scattering of the northern kingdom that had more faith than the southern kingdom. The Jews, they had more faith in Yahweh Shai. <laughs> than the Jews did. And and uh here's your example. Let's read that in the NLT. The tenth verse, Matthew eight and ten. When Yahweh heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Look at that. And then it goes on to say, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And these are all Israelites. All right. Basically, Yahweh is talking about the other fold. Remember when he said the other fold? Okay. Other sheep I have. What do you think he was talking about? talking about the rest of the tribes man that's what he's talking about okay remember the the southern kingdom eventually had to be joined with the northern kingdom of israel to become one nation remember that john 10 and 16 and the beginning of it started with yahweh shai's ministry now we're in the end of it we're we're, we're completing the job that Yahweh Shai started more than 2,000 years ago. We're, 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 we're out there teaching the word in hopes of joining all the tribes together. The elect, that is, of the nation of Israel. The house of David. The tabernacle of David. Remember that? That consists of not just the, the southern kingdom. The tabernacle of David consists of the southern and northern kingdom. The elect of the southern and northern kingdom. So our, our ministry is very important, man. John the 10th chapter. 
and the 16th verse, and other sheep I have. What do you think he meant by that? Which are not of this fold. What fold? The southern kingdom. The Jews, if you will. Them also I must bring. That's the northern kingdom. And they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold. The same thing the Lord told Ezekiel. Take that one stick of Judah and his companions and the other stick of Ephraim and his companions and join them into what? One stick. One nation. All right? And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There you go, man. All right? So, back to Mark 7. Mark 7 and 27. But Yahushai said unto her, right? Let the children first be filled. So now you know what that means. The southern kingdom, the Jews, let them get the truth first. For it is not meet to take the children's bed and to cast it unto the dogs. So again, just because he used the term dog, meaning he wasn't insulting her. Okay, in, in some cases the dog, dog can be used as, as an example of loyalty and, and humility. Caleb, Caleb, uh, uh, Caleb, the name Caleb means dog. And what kind of characteristic did he have? He was humble and he was loyal, man. Look what he told Moses. Look, the land is ready for us to take it over. So just because you see the term dog don't mean it's, it's used as an insult. Because hey, listen to the, what the woman said. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Right, so the, the beginning with the tribe of Judah, it starts with them, but it filters on down to the rest of the tribes. Remember, it's the whole nation that got to be gathered, not just the Jews. Hey, the Jews had an attitude like uh, as if they were the only people of the Lord. That's why the Apostle Paul had to come back and, and, and curse them out. Hebrews the 11th chapter. Yes, they were cast away, but the other, as in the other tribes, you know, they went into Assyrian captivity and then they came over to the Americas. But the Lord never cast away his people, period. Point blank end of story, meaning cast away never to take them back. That's why the Apostle Paul said this. All right, this, uh, what is that? Romans 11. Romans 11, actually. Romans 11. The Lord said about the tribe of Ephraim, as a matter of fact, let me show you that before we read that. He said, I, I know Ephraim. Okay, engraving. I know Ephraim. It is right here because the Jews were acting as if they're the only people of the Lord left as in the southern kingdom forget about the rest of the tribes they don't count they're done away with etc etc and the answer is no man the, the rest of the tribes are very much a part of 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 salvation as the Jews are it's one it's 12 tribes man 12 tribes one nation this is Hosea, the fifth chapter. You even got now, you even got examples of that. You got certain Israelites teaching that Ephraim and the, the, Let, the so-called Latino tribes, they're not part of our nation. They're the same spirits back then that cast off the, the, the northern kingdom and, and, and cast them off for good. No, 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 man. The Lord is calling back all his people, all the tribes, beginning with the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom, and then the northern kingdom. But the truth had to be first taught to the southern kingdom first. Then it filtered down to the northern kingdom. That's what Yahweh was telling the woman. Let the children first be filled. That's what that means. Hosea the fifth chapter, the third verse. I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me as in the kingdom of Israel. You had the kingdom of Israel, which consisted of Ephraim and the rest of the tribes. They were known as the kingdom of Israel. You had the kingdom of Judah. You had the kingdom of Israel two separate kingdoms and this happened after the death 
of Solomon, King Solomon. You had to deal with Roboam and Jeroboam. Jeroboam took, you had the prophet Ahijah who came to Jeroboam, I believe it was. Yeah, Jeroboam, and told him that you're going to take the rest of the tribes. You're going to take 10 tribes. The whole deal with the garment, and he ripped the garment, and gave him 10 pieces, something like that. Jeroboam, right? And we can read about it, Jeroboam. And then you had Roboam. Roboam took the southern kingdom. Jeroboam took the northern kingdom. Thus began the split of the nation of Israel. This is documented history. Hosea 5 and 3. I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. So there you go. That's why later the Apostle Paul said, I say have the Lord cast away his people. We're going to read that. And Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. Right. The tribe of Ephraim, they, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the scriptures, tell us, the scriptures tell us about Jeroboam, how he hired the base of the people to be priests. So, so the northern kingdom was committing iniquity upon iniquity, man. Their main iniquity was the worshiping of idols. Why do you think it says Ephraim, uh, speaks about Ephraim as a silly dove, Ephraim is joined to idols. Ephraim led the rest of the tribes, the northern kingdom. Caused them to all go astray. Okay? But the Lord said, Ephraim is not, he knows Ephraim and Israel is not hid from him. So Ephraim is not, as a matter of fact, let's read that in NLT. Hosea 5 and 3. I know what you are like, O Ephraim. You cannot hide yourself from me, O Israel. You have left me as a prostitute leaves a husband. You are utterly defiled. Yeah, again, as it is written of Ephraim, they're joined unto idols. Leave Ephraim alone. And you see that to this very day, the so-called Puerto Ricans with their, their idols, man. They love that Serapis Christus nonsense. They put it on the headlights of their car and they put it on the dashboard. They, you go into their homes, they got shrines to Serapis Christus. They don't even know that they're worshiping Serapis Christus. <laughs> and you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, salvations of the Israelites, as it is written. So there, there's the tribe of Ephraim for you. That's how we know the tribe of Ephraim is the so-called Puerto Ricans, man. Okay? You know by the Spirit. All right? So that's why the Apostle Paul said, Romans 11 and 1, I say then, because the Jews were acting as if it, they were the only people of the Lord left, the southern kingdom. They had totally written off the northern kingdom, okay? But this is what the Apostle Paul said. Romans 11 and 1, I say then have the heavenly father cast away his people. The most high forbid, meaning no, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. The heavenly father have not cast away his people, and that includes the northern kingdom which he foreknew because the southern kingdom was saying, no, the northern kingdom is done away with. There's only one, uh, there's only one kingdom left. That's the southern kingdom, which is madness. The seed of Israel can't, can't be cast away with. The northern kingdom is still the seed of Israel. There's still the seed of Jacob. Romans 11 and 2. The most I have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. All right. Then he goes on to say, What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession for the heavenly father against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone. See, that's the, that was the attitude of the Jews, the southern kingdom. We're the only Israelites left. All them other Israelites, they're done away with. We're the only ones left. The southern kingdom, the Jews, all about us. The same way Elijah thought he was the only prophet left. L listen to what he said. Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. I'm the only prophet left. But what was the reply that the Heavenly Father gave Elijah? Like the Apostle Paul is saying here. But what saith the answer of the Heavenly Father unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And seven means thousand means completion. So it's a lot more than 7,000. So the Lord had to remind Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Elijah. The Lord, the Lord had to remind Elijah, no, you're not the only prophet left, Elijah. I know you, you, you know you're special, but you're not the only prophet left. I got other prophets too. 
the same way the Jews had to be reminded by Apostle Paul and the men that taught with him. Even Yahweh Shai, when he said, other fold I have, other sheep I have, not of this fold, them also must I bring. The same way the, the kingdom of Judah had to get a, st a, a, a strong reminder that no, the other tribes are not done away with. They're still just as much the Lord's people as you Jews are the Lord's people. You, you southern kingdom. You see that? And then he goes on to say, even so then at this present time also there is a, rem there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Because the, the, there's no way the, the tabernacle of David could be made up without the northern kingdom. It's impossible. Because during the time of King David, you had all the tribes together. And not only Jews were of David's cabinet. All right, You had members of the other tribes that were part of David's cabinet. So they also must be brought into the fold. Okay? You got, you got Israelites that don't even understand what I'm saying to you. Then it goes on to say, back to Mark 7 and 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of your daughter. There you go. In the NLT, it says, Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And the reason why he healed the daughter, because he, or rather, her daughter was an Israelite. She was an Israelite, and her daughter was an Israelite. And she was an Israelite that had great faith. It doesn't say what tribe she was of. It doesn't say if she was of the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom. But definitely she was an Israelite. One thing we know, she wasn't part of that fold that Yahweh initially came to teach first. That's why he said to her, let the children first be filled. And that fold being the Jews. So it stands to reason, it makes sense that she had to be of another tribe. Matter of fact, um, uh, that, uh, before I go, what is that? Um, uh, I think it's in James 1 and 1, which I read, but let's go back to James 1. When you look up, uh, uh, oh, Acts, I think it's in Acts. Acts. Yeah, Acts, Acts 10, Acts 10 and, uh, what is it, Acts 10 and another nation, all right, because if you go back to Cornelius, Acts 10 and 34, is it? Yeah, Acts 10 and 34. There we go, Acts 10 and 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that the most is not a respecter of persons but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted by him because the israelites were scattered in, into every nation no that's not um that's not what i want my head is right here this is what i want this is what I want. This is what I want. Now check this out. This is Acts 10 and 28. And he said unto them, You know how that is that it is unlawful for an, an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But the Heavenly Father have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Now that term another nation in the Greek it literally means another tribe because remember how the jews acted towards the the uh, members of the northern kingdom which was uh, you had a scattering of them back then they acted as if they were of another nation that the lord had written them off they're not the lord's people etc 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 that's why apostle paul had to come back and say i say then have the lord cast away his people the answer is no okay they're still of the seed of jacob they're still of the seed of israel Okay, let's look at that term, another nation. One of another nation. There you go. The Greek word, alophilos. How many of these wacky-tacky Christians know of this term, alophilos, and what it really means? How many Israelites know what this term, alophilos, means? Alophilos. 
That's the Greek. Strong's G246, Alophilos. Alophilos. And the term Alophilos, Alophilos literally means another tribe. As I'm going to show you. Let's go to the root word etymology. Pastor did his video. The importance of root words, right? Well, here's another example. Alophilos. Let's first look at the first part of the word. Alof. Or alos. Okay, I'm sorry. Alos. What does that mean? A primary word. Another. Other. Alos. Right. Alos. Alos. Philos, right? Alophilos. Alos means another. Philos means tribe, as I'm going to show you. So the first part of the word aloh, alo, or alo means another. Alo means another. Philos means tribe. Let's look at that. The root word for, by the way, triple four. Check that out. Phile, or f let's look at fule, fule. Or Fulos. Strong's G fifty four forty three, Fule, Fule. And what is the word there? Tribe. So when when again, let's go back and read the scripture. Okay. Uh, bear with me for a minute. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me bring in my uh, proctor because I want to do an experiment here. I want to show you something. Uh, where are we at? Uh, Acts 10 and 28. Is it 10? Oh, let's see. 28. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do a side by side. Boom. Okay. So we're going down to the 28th verse. And he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing. This is Peter speaking to Cornelius. For a man that is a Jew, he's talking about himself. Peter came out of the southern kingdom to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Now, it doesn't say, but it's, there's a good possibility Cornelius could have been a member of the northern kingdom. Could have been. All right. It doesn't say, but he could have. Hence, he was. It says what another another nation had, but he actually what Peter actually said to them, or said to him was of another tribe. But the heavenly Father have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean, right? Because the Lord's getting ready to to cleanse all of Israel, not just the Jews only. Um, so another nation, we looked that up. We discovered the 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 Greek word there is alophilos, alo meaning another, philos meaning tribe, as we see here, phile, or phil, phil, let's play it again, phule actually. Let's play it again. Strong's G fifty four forty three, phule, phule. And what does it mean? A tribe. See another tribe. In the New Testament, all the persons descended from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. So that includes the northern kingdom. All right. The northern kingdom. You see that? So another tribe. Okay. So how are you going to get around that? All right. So this woman in Matthew the seventh chapter or rather mark the seventh chapter could have been of another tribe which is why i wish i said to her let the children first be filled all right all right so hopefully you were edified if you was drop a line in the comment section i'll see you in the next lesson